Hi, Jeff. Um, how was how how was the defense tonight in terms of of just not getting into into a groove um, early against these guys after after last after playing so well yesterday? It was tough. Uh, I thought we had built good momentum after last night and or yesterday afternoon and. Again, we've talk, talked about it a lot. We know that that's a big part of how we're going to be successful. And against the good teams, um, you have to have that because you're not going to out-talent or outscore them. So we have to uh, do better. And Steph, what does what the, the assist record mean to you? And, and that's uh, that's a lot of assists and something that, You'll you take a lot of pride in and in, in getting your teammates the ball to, to make plays. This special is kind of a longevity award, but in terms of playing for the same franchise for now 12 years and hopefully a lot longer, um, there's been some some greats that have come through here for however long. And you know, anytime you've done something or reached a level that. Uh, is the top of the list for a franchise. It's pretty special. So uh, I wish it was under different circumstances, obviously, with the game tonight. But um, I can take a second and appreciate that for sure because, um, you know, a lot goes into that. I've had so many great teammates throughout the years. And obviously, I love the score, but definitely the ability to set other guys up and um, assists only count if other people make baskets, so it makes a makes a pretty special award for sure, or not award, but uh, record. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Janie. Um, following up on Janie's first question about the defense, specifically um, defending in the paint, what did the Lakers do to just kind of expose you guys there tonight? I mean, that's one of their strong suits. So it's not. I mean, the numbers are crazy, but that they do that well all year, or have done it well all year. Um, but they they have enough shooting that they can space you out. Obviously, LeBron can be a playmaker a lot of different ways. Um, and then Montrez was was amazing tonight, uh, putting pressure on us. You know, down low. Um, I don't know how much of it was off offensive rebounds, but it seemed like the rotation was there. But then the secondary rotation was a little late, and uh, they made us pay. So we we talked about it before. Uh, it was a, the exact opposite of last night where you you have to protect the three-point line against Utah if you're going to win. And this is, uh, you know, a 180. You got to protect the paint. They have shooters, but you got to protect the paint if you want to build momentum because they, they try to get easy, easy buckets, and they did that. Stefan, you said a few weeks ago that uh, you guys were average, uh, and at the time your record was around the same as what you are now. Yesterday you were way above average. <laughs> Today you were below average. What do you think it's, is required to get to that beyond average place where you guys want to be? I'm trying to say something different that I haven't said all year. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's just certain principles, obviously, of how we're going to play. It's our identity of. That has to show up every night. And I think at the end of the day, like, I, I think I said it last night, our expectations go through the roof when you play like you did last uh, against Utah and you come and drop the ball tonight and that's why we are 20 and 20. But it takes a lot. Winning is hard in this league. We all know that. And we all know you can't just show up and uh, momentum's not just going to carry just because you played well the game before. So I think – it's a collective effort across the board, but it's just an understanding that winning is hard. And we talk about the margins and, you know, where we are as a team. And, you know, if you want to beat the good teams, you can't have any, you know, cracks in the armor. Um, you know, we put up a decent fight tonight in the first quarter and then the wheels fell off. So um, we got to play better. We have to develop a winning attitude every single night. Um, and honestly, we got to get sick of, you know, just getting blown out because that's embarrassing. I think we have to have some pride about how we're playing. You can lose games. That's going to happen. But 
Um, not like that. Hey, Steph, James Hill with BNC Sports. Um, happy belated birthday. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, the warrior way and helping these young guys uh, learn the blueprint uh, for success because they can look and see the banners. They see what you and Dre do. Can you just talk about, uh, you know, bringing guys along? It's tough because I, I talked about it before where you have, like you said, an expectation because we are a championship, <clears throat> you know, winning team and I've done it many times different ways and there's a, a level of respect to what the Warriors mean now um, on that, you know, at that level. And like you said, me and Draymond have been there, Clay. Um, we have a lot of guys that come from a lot of different places, different franchises, or young guys coming from college, and you know it's it's a tough balance. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's just a lot of noise at times, but I think it for us we have to stay consistent on what we're asking everybody to do and hold each other accountable to that, and we'll get better, you know, as the year goes on. I think, you know, the last two days we've shown the highs of what we can do and the lows of what we can do. And so can't get caught up in the emotional roller coaster, but you do have to have a sense of pride about, again, playing hard, playing physical, competing, um, just being like dead ass exhausted when you walk off the floor because you gave it everything you have. And then that'll in turn put us in better positions to win. Your passing. Um, how do you feel like you've evolved the most as a facilitator from you know the beginning of your career now? Um, I don't know. I got the ball in my hands obviously a lot more than I did early in my career, but that's mostly like pick and roll type situations where you can read the defenses getting stronger where you get in the paint and you can make plays, you know, kicking it to the weak side or stuff like that where you're not getting bumped off your lines and and all that. You know, I still try crazy stuff, wrap around behind the back, left hand, all type of crazy passes just because I feel like, you know, I can make them. Um, and thankfully, I got a little bit longer leash with that than I did earlier in my career. But the rest of it is just seeing the floor, the game slowing down and um, – Balancing scoring and playmaking and reading the defense it comes with experience. Leonardo the Torres from Peru. Despite the loss, what are the positive things you can take away from today? Absolutely nothing. Positive is we got a game on Wednesday. There you go. That's the positive. It's the Mark Haynes, Clutch Points. Um, you and uh, Nico shared the same birthday as we know. Uh, he came through your basketball camp, you know, over the years. How special is it to have him as a teammate, as as your backup point guard? I mean, it's dope for sure. Like you said, there's history there. And got to see him as he was coming out of high school. And, you know, he showed out at the camp. I mean, obviously, it means I'm, I'm getting older. But all it means, you know, the, some of the young guys who you kind of can mentor that you have been able to interact with, uh, through the years, now they're professional basketball players at this level. So him and Wise um, both came through the camp, and it's probably 15 or so, maybe a little bit more, you know, in the rest of the league. So it's kind of cool just to see that evolution. Hey, Seth, Kylan with Cron4. After what you just described as an embarrassing loss and surely some frustration with the inconsistency uh, at this point in the season, how do you try to mentally reset? How do you try to encourage maybe the other guys to just kind of reset yourselves after a loss like this and try to fire up for the upcoming games? It's, it's about our pride and our ego as a team, how we respond. Um you know, we've gotten blown out twice by by them, and I think we wanted to, to obviously have a better showing tonight. But uh, I don't think it's a bad thing to admit that there's a lot of pressure on us as a team to win, you know, or to take care of business on this road trip. Um, 
playing some teams that are hungry, that are in that chase as well. Uh, you can't look at records. You have to go just play basketball and, and execute and compete and take a game on the road. Um, these are games we should win if we're playing our best basketball. And considering how you know this last six game stretch has been, we we absolutely need to to play better. So um, it's it's good to feel a little pressure and a little sense of urgency, and hopefully we can uh, turn that on. Um, you know, this the rest of this week. You play LeBron obviously four four times in a row in the finals. Um, just give me your point of view on you guys' competitive relationship and respect that you have for each other. Respect is always there. Um, like you said, you have a situation where it's not just me and him. Obviously, there's teams going at each other and you're competing year after year after year. Um, and you get to see up close and personal greatness. And I think on he would say the same thing. There's obviously a lot of pettiness and competitiveness and trash talking and all that type of stuff that went on, you know, during those those, those runs. Um, but that's the fun of it all. And I think, like you said, the respect level is always there and the appreciation for, you know, that competition at that level. Um, and obviously the goal now is to get back there while we still can. All right, last question is for Steve Croner. Steve, go ahead. He has a question about a Stanford young lady just to see them do a one-on-one. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here, Raymond. Thank you. Uh, Steph, I know your relationship with uh, Cameron Brink. Like a couple of quick questions about her. One, she said the, the thing that she, you have helped her most regarding is being patient. How have you done that? Uh... There was a time when she was in high school where she was trying to develop her jumper and um, spent a little bit of time with her. Gave her some pointers. My dad did as well. Um, but just in terms of your development, you put the work in, the time in, every year you're going to get better, and she's taking advantage of that. And um, even with her, her skill set um, and her physical presence on the court, like – uh, in high school, obviously, there's a lot of attention drawn to her and, and to use that to her advantage at times. But now to see her in college, like, uh, I know she's going to keep getting better. Honestly, I don't really have to tell her much now. She's she's just kind of off and running. So it's pretty been awesome to watch and and see. Uh, and obviously, with the tournament coming up, it's going to be a big moment as a freshman coming in trying to help the team win. So excited to watch her play. One quick follow-up. Tara Vanderveer said that uh, Cameron – I mean, she has kind of a slight, you know, a thin build, but she's a lot tougher than than she, you might think. Where does she get that from? Her mama and her daddy. <laughs>